Kelly Jennings here from Channel 7's Creek to Coast and I'm really pleased to be involved with Switch Your Fish, encouraging Sunshine Coast anglers to target a broader range of species that still have fantastic eating qualities. And to show you what I mean, I've got some fresh cobia fillets, which I kid you not, is one of my favourite eating fish. Apart from being great fun to catch, cobia have excellent yield, as you can see from these beautiful thick fillets. So the first thing we need to do is just cut away some of that bloodline. Ah, the local fish are going to love this. Fatten up the muddy. Those look so good. What I'm going to do is pan fry them and then make an olive salsa to go along the side. Now I've got some currants and I've got some balsamic vinegar. The currants may seem like an unusual ingredient to go into a savoury dish. It's an Italian idea and there's quite a few Sicilian sauces for seafood that include currants or sultanas. You get the lovely sort of sweet sour mix and it goes beautifully with the oily saltiness of fish. I really encourage you to give it a go. Don't be scared. They can just soak up the balsamic and plump up a bit while we sort out the rest of the salsa. All right, well, olive salsa's going to need olives. So to get the pips out, we give them a good smash with the wide side of a knife. That should release the pip. And then I'm really roughly chopping them. There's nothing neat and tidy about this salsa. So just do that again and again. Squirts of beautiful, juicy olive oil coming out of there. I like to use these marinated olives just to add another layer of flavour. And the black Kalamata olives already have the pips removed, so all I need to do is slice them roughly again. I'm trying not to get them in rings like the old-fashioned cocktail olive. Uh, a reason I want to do a salsa with this dish rather than a sauce for the cobia is because its fillets really do deserve to shine. They cook up so white and so moist. I don't want to smother them with a sauce, so I want to serve them with something bright and colourful, but on the side. Because cobia has a higher oil content, it can really handle these stronger flavours. It's just going to work beautifully. Next ingredient is some red and yellow tomatoes, and I'm just gonna cut them roughly also. Probably about eight to 10, and uh, this salsa will then feed about maybe four, depends how hungry your fishermen are. Great color adding to the dish, which is what a salsa is all about. Salsa just means fresh sauce, and this looks like a fresh sauce. Finishing off the salsa, it's just putting in some herbs. I've got some chopped basil and parsley in there, some toasted pine nuts, beautiful little creamy crunch on those. Of course, our plumped up currants and the balsamic that they've been soaking in. And I want to put a bit of oil in, so why not use the oil that's left over from the olive, the lovely marinating oil. Stir that all together, and all those flavors can marinate while we cook the fish. The lovely big thick cobia fillets enable you to cut these nice big diagonal slices and you sort of get like a, a, a scallop of, of fish. It's just beautiful. It's the same way I prepare Spanish mackerel, which is another beautiful, as a born and bred Queenslander, I love Spanish mackerel. Cooked very simply in butter and lemon, but I can honestly say that cobia, cooked the same simply to show off its beautiful flesh, it's right up there with it. Just a drizzle of oil and a little bit in the pan. And then I'm just going to season it with some cracked pepper, quite generously, but we don't need any salt in this one. The olives are going to be quite salty enough. And just a bit more pepper on that side as well.
While snapper and pearlies might be the most popular catch and cook species in Queensland, my family has been loving cobia for generations. My granddad in this photo has caught an absolute beauty, but he is outdone by my dad. What an absolute stonker. Coming up the end there is me and my brother. I love catching and cooking cobia. If you've caught a cobia, you'll always remember it. They hit hard, they go hard, and then you have this moment sometimes where it comes up near the boat and you can see it, see the colour, and you think, ah, oh, no, I've caught a shark. And then a moment of great joy when you realise it's not a shark, it's a cobia. So you'll not only be able to feed your family, but it's likely you'll have leftover fillets to share with your friends. What's not to love? This is just one of the many ways you can enjoy fresh cobia. It's a species that should be better known for its eating quality. So switch your fish. There's a whole world of great angling and perfect eating to be enjoyed out there. Everyone turns up when the food's cooked. I've got the guys from SCF Australia here, and why not tuck in while it's warm? Ben? I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> yes, you wow, will. Wow, this looks incredible. Good. Well, I hope you like it. Right, uh, let's I'm have confident a go. That you will. I've actually already pinched some of the salsa. It's bloody delicious. So, have a go. I mean, look at that it. beautiful white cobia. It's just lovely. Mm -hmm. Salty, sweet. Fresh fish, that is delicious. Well done, I'm impressed. My pleasure, it's delicious. <laughs>